We are now going to liken our lives to a carefully selected everyday life story from the movie Gandhi, which will help you see possible solutions to your challenges. In this 1982 film, Gandhi, played by Ben Kingsley, experiences significant moral development in a scene with his wife. Let's watch the scene first, then analyze it. And you uh, call it an ashram? That's right. The word only means community, but it could stand for village or the world. <laughs> You're an ambitious man, Mr. Gandhi. I hope not. Uh, I hear that you also participate in preparing the meals and uh, cleaning the toilets. Is that part of the experiment? Bar? We will need another place set for Mr. Walker's driver. I will tell Tara. Yes, it's um, one way to learn that each man's labor is as important as another's. In fact, while you're doing it, cleaning the toilet seems far more important than the law. Please, come and join us. You'll need something before your journey back. Uh, would you excuse me, please? Yeah, sure. What is it? Sora was sent to tell me I must rake and cover the latrine. That's right. Everyone takes their turn. It is the work of untouchables. In this place, there are no untouchables, and no work is beneath any of us. I'm your wife. All the more reason. As you command. The others may follow you, but you forget. I knew you when you were a boy. It's not me. It's the principle. And you will do it with joy or not do it at all. Not at all, then. All right, then, go. You oh, don't belong here. Go, leave the Amram. Get out. Altogether, we don't want you. Have you the sheep? I'm your wife. Have you the What's the matter with me? You are human. Only human. And it's even harder for those of us who do not even want to be as good as you. I apologize. I must get back to that reporter. And I must break and cover the latrine. Watch the beginning of the scene again. Gandhi's challenge is that he needs to communicate to the world what his community and movement is about. And you, uh, call it an ashram? That's right. The word only means community, but it could stand for village or the world. <laughs> Note that Gandhi could have stopped his explanation with community or village, a modest ambition. But instead, he added, the world, a very much bigger ambition. This is a clue that Gandhi may have a problem with being prideful, which sets the conflict that is about to take place with his wife. <laughs> You're an ambitious man, Mr. Gandhi. I hope not. Gandhi doesn't want the world to see his community as a product of an ambitious man. How does he want his community to be seen? Uh, I hear that you also participate in preparing the meals and uh, cleaning the toilets. Is that part of the experiment? Bar? We will need another place set for Mr. Walker's driver. I will tell Tara. Why did Gandhi speak to Ba before answering the reporter's question about cleaning the latrines? And why is she upset? Do you think she heard them talking about the latrines? Yes, it's um, one way to learn that each man's labor is as important as another's. In fact, while you're doing it, cleaning the toilet seems far more important than the law. 
Please, come and join us. You'll need something before your journey back. Uh, yes, sure. Would you excuse me, please? Yes, yeah, sure. Gandhi wants the reporter to see his community led by a humble man who praises the lowly task of cleaning toilets over following the law. What is it? Sora was sent to tell me I must rake and cover the latrine. He asked his question cautiously, but authoritatively. He wants to be an authority in his community. Is it possible that his standing over her and her turning away from him expresses their unequal relationship and his sense of a position of power over her? That's right. Everyone takes their turn. It is the work of untouchables. So Gandhi probably knew that his wife's turn was coming up soon and that it could be an issue for her. So when the reporter asked about the latrines, Gandhi addressed Ba before answering his question. Why is this issue so important to Ba? She comes from a culture with a caste system. In her worldview, cleaning the latrines would make her an untouchable, the lowest social and spiritual caste. She has faithfully lived this religious system her entire life, and now her husband is asking her to give it up. Can her husband see what he is asking of her? In this place, there are no untouchables, and no work is beneath any of us. I'm your wife. How long would it take to help someone abandon a deeply held, lifelong worldview? Gandhi gives Ba only two sentences, asserting his authority to get her to comply. Gandhi sees in her face, now turned to him, the manifestation of her opposition. She is holding on to her identity in the caste system, and he to his as an authority. They aren't speaking to each other as individuals, but as representatives of their held onto worldviews. All the more reason. It's you, Command. The others may follow you, but you forget. I knew you when you were a boy. Gandhi avoided an overtly angry response and instead responded with a forced smile. He gave Ba no space to consider her belief in the caste system, and now she is giving him no space to consider his belief in his authority. She throws it in his face, as you command. She doesn't sincerely surrender to Gandhi's expectation, but rather uses her surrender to justify herself as a victim of cruel authority forced to act contrary to her cherished identity in her culture. At the end of her speech, there is not only an implied accusation of pride. I knew you when you weren't so high and mighty and trying to be a god to me, but a note of pleading in her voice as she tells him that she knows his vulnerabilities. How will Gandhi respond? It's not me. It's the principle. And you will do it with joy or not do it at all. Not at all, then. Tragically, it was the slight pleading in Ba's voice that called out Gandhi's harshest reply so far. Gandhi realizes that asserting his own authority isn't enough to justify his position, so he appeals to a higher authority. But it's the same thing. He wants his wife to submit to his vision, whether through his authority or the principal's authority. She refuses. They are at an impasse. They are now defensively justifying their identities in their worldviews with a kind of fanaticism. All right, then go. You oh, don't be nice here. Go, me. leave the arm Get out. Oh, All together, we don't. What are you doing? Can you do she? I'm your wife. Where do you expect me to go? As Gandhi finally resorts to violence, we see that they have nothing between them but this defensive justifying of their own views against the perceived ridiculousness of the others. Before now, these views were part of the background worldviews of who Ba and Gandhi were. But now Ba and Gandhi treat them as if they are central to their identity and to be protected at all cost, even violence. What can they do? We are friends, get out! Get all together, we don't! What are you doing? Can you do sheep? I'm your wife! Go. What's the matter with me? Gandhi suddenly lets go of his defense of his authority. 
Immediately, Ba lets go over her accusations toward him. Now, when she notes his humanity, it is with love rather than condemnation. They both become humble and responsive. The camera now brings them together in a two-shot profile. As they look at each other, they begin for the first time in the scene to see each other, not as pawns in a moral game to justify themselves, but as two human beings who love each other. I apologize. I must get back to that reporter. And I must break and cover the latrine. Gandhi reached out and touched her shoulders gently. She bowed her head ever so slightly. So what has happened here? Gandhi and Ba both sought each other's cooperation, but defensively locked into opposing viewpoints, making them no longer able to see each other as human beings, much less as spouses. No doubt each of them felt they should have been kind to each other. But how could they when the other was being so ridiculous? They narrowed the range of options open to them by claiming they couldn't do what they felt they should do. They now sacrificed their opposing views, giving them up in hopes of something new emerging between them. Gandhi will give up his authoritarian position and go to the reporter and talk to him in a new way about what his community is about. And Ba will give up her position in the caste system and go clean the latrines and find a new way to think about her culture. The most remarkable thing about the screenwriter's version of this conflict was his ability to see that these two human beings were capable of this kind of healing. Now, let's discuss what we've learned from watching Gandhi and Ba work through their conflict.